In a vacuum state, we naturally wouldn't be able to breathe, let alone think about listening to or making phone calls. However, things are different when we venture into outer space. When astronauts are outside the Earth's atmosphere, they wear special protective suits that include sealed helmets, oxygen supply, and specialized communication devices with microphones positioned near their mouths. But outside of those suits, it's still a vacuum environment. So, how can they hear, make calls, and communicate with each other? In reality, all our communication devices use radio waves to transmit signals. And radio waves work much like light. They don't require a medium like air to propagate and actually function more efficiently in a vacuum. All electromagnetic waves, including visible light, don't need a medium for transmission. And thus, they travel fastest in a vacuum, about 300,000 kilometers per second. This is how the electromagnetic radiation from the sun reaches our Earth, traversing 150 million kilometers of empty space. To understand this better, let's delve into the mechanics of phone calls. The telephone is a remarkable invention of humanity that emerged in the 18th century and officially became a communication device in the mid-19th century. The first person to file a patent for the invention of the telephone was the British inventor Alexander Graham Bell, who submitted his patent application in March 1876, earning him the title of the father of the telephone. However, on June 15, 2002, the United States Congress passed Resolution 269, officially recognizing Antonio Meucci as the true inventor of the telephone. It was because Meucci had publicly demonstrated his invention as early as 1860 and published about it in an Italian newspaper. In this way, we tactilely acknowledge that there are two fathers of the telephone, and we still do not have a definitive conclusion as to who truly made the first telephone for humanity. So, let's set aside that debate for now and focus on the principles behind the functioning of the telephone. After the invention of the telephone, it gradually evolved from simple short-distance calls to long-distance calls, conference calls, video calls, and so on. It transitioned from manual dialing to program control telephony, dual-tone multi-frequency DTMF phones, and more. With advancing technology, we now have internet phones, digital mobile phone devices, and various other methods of making calls, making communication increasingly convenient. But regardless of its operation or form, the essence of the telephone remains unchanged. It allows us to speak in one place and be heard in another, facilitating communication through voice. The basic principle is that people produce sound waves through their mouths, which are then transmitted as audio waves into a microphone. The microphone converts the sound waves into audio vibrations through its receiving devices. And then, these vibrations are further converted into varying electric currents. The electric current is transmitted to the recipient's telephone through wires or wireless waves. And the receiving device in the telephone converts the electric current back into audio vibrations through a series of inverse processes to the transmitting device. These vibrations are then transformed into voice audio waves which are transmitted to the other person through the air and received by their ears. In this way, both parties in a telephone conversation form a communication channel. By understanding the basic operating principles of telephones mentioned above, we should clearly see that, in addition to transmitting electrical signals, telephones also require a fundamental and essential transmission tool, sound waves. Without sound waves, a telephone cannot transmit or receive voices. Therefore, astronauts outside of space wearing specialized protective suits can indeed hear and make phone calls normally. However, if they were to remove those suits in a vacuum environment, sound would be unable to propagate. Why is that? Sound waves are mechanical waves. The difference between mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves is that electromagnetic waves can propagate without a medium, while sound waves require a medium for transmission. The simplest and most common medium is air, and sound waves can only travel through the oscillation of air molecules and other mediums. Sound waves propagate at a speed of about 340 meters per second in air, and faster in steel at around 5,200 meters per second. Clearly, in a vacuum, there is no medium for transmission. Therefore, even if you weren't suffocating in this environment, sound would have no means of reaching the microphone. 
If the listener on the other end of the phone call were also in a vacuum, there would be no vibrational sound waves, and the sound would be unable to pass through the external auditory canal to the eardrum, rendering the microphone sound inaudible. Thus, in a vacuum state, without the aid of specialized protective suits and oxygen supply, not only would humans be unable to survive, but they would also be unable to produce sound or receive calls. All right, that's all for today. Don't leave without hitting the like button to support our team. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more space videos.